Welcome to Episode 9D of Climate, Trees, and Legacy. The title of this segment is California Sequoias Thrive in Urban Parks of Seattle and Portland. This is the fourth video in the Redwood Sequoia series. Here are the title images of the three previous videos. This segment documents the giant sequoias and coast redwoods thriving in two urban parks and one university campus in Portland, Oregon and Seattle, Washington. Notice how far north Portland and Seattle are beyond the native ranges of California's two most celebrated tree species. Documentation of ability to thrive far to the north, sadly for just about all our native trees in the USA, that's important because while many trees have very ancient lineages and therefore have successfully migrated with changes in climate in the past, the speed of climate change this century is far too fast for almost all of them. Quite simply, squirrels and birds and gusts of wind cannot disperse their seeds northward far enough and fast enough to keep pace with human-caused climate change already underway. So we're going to have to help them move. I'm Connie Barlow. Today is August 30th, 2017, and I'm in Northern California along the coast in Redwood Country. Almost all the videos you're going to see in this segment were filmed about eight, nine months ago when I was living in the Pacific Northwest. You'll see one park in Portland, another park in Seattle, Washington, and the UW, University of Washington campus in Seattle too, where I did the filming of coast redwoods and mostly giant sequoias. We'll start the field documentation of coast redwoods and giant sequoias at Laurelhurst Park in Portland, in the section of the park where there are pathways meandering along Firwood Lake. Here's an aerial photo view of Firwood Lake, thanks to Google Maps. And using Google's 3D feature, you can glimpse just how tall these trees are compared to the surrounding neighborhoods. Certainly the biggest of the giant sequoias was in the ground by the time the park was completed, a full century ago. Let's begin. Laurelhurst Park. This property has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places, U.S. Department of the Interior, National Park Service, February 2001. In 1903, John Olmsted identified this 30 acres on the Williams Ladd Farm as a feature park. In 1909, it was acquired by the city of Portland called Ladd Park. It was designed in 1910 by Portland Park Superintendent Emanuel Misch in the Olmsted naturalistic style. Renamed Laurelhurst Park in 1912 and completed in 1916. It featured lighted pathways, landscaped areas, Furwood Lake, and the Anarchy Street Comfort Station. December 4th, Sunday afternoon, Laurelhurst Park. Portland. Look at how thick it is at the base. And then the beauty as it goes up. And here's what we have at the base. Old sign. This one's called Big Tree. Sequoia Dendron Giganteum. California. Look at the colors on this. The lichen, the redness of the bark here, just as we look up. Big tree indeed. 
And here's a, another one. We just walked, oh, I don't know, 100 yards into the park. They're everywhere. They are everywhere around here. And what's lovely here is we saw these three. Look at, there's another one and another one behind there. Let me see if I can get a little closer here to see these two at the same time. Yeah, I think so. Look at that. Oh, golly. These are big trees, too. <laughs> oh. Wow. Right. There's so many of them here that they would have been able to pollinate one another and make fertile seeds. So you can bet, I'm gonna, not only am I going to look for some cones, but just right now looking, I see some right here in front of me. Let's go collecting. I just collected a bunch of cones from uh, the far back two of these trees. I couldn't find any real unmuddy cones from this first one here. But everywhere I look, the big tree was back there. We've got more there. We've got a giant one right behind, actually two. Oh my gosh, more over here. This place is full of giant sequoias. This is Laurelhurst Park, Portland, Oregon, December 4th. Continuing along the trail, Here's that other big, beautiful, giant sequoia. Yeah, I'd say they do just fine in Northern Oregon. Just fine. Okay, that's the tree I just took a picture of Michael of when I was down there. And as we continued up, Here's another one right here, another giant sequoia. And then as we go around here, well, look at what we have here. And another couple off this side. This is just, just spectacular. Stopping here for a moment because this is a sequoia and look at the giant base there. But also, right along it here, I was looking at this fern and I was thinking, if you just look at this, though both of those were around in the Jurassic. And then I looked over here and I thought, what is that? Well, lo and behold, that is a dawn redwood. Meta sequoia would have been around even a little older than the Jurassic. Here's how I can tell it's a meta sequoia, dawn redwood, not a redwood. It's a little baby. Let's go take a look. All right, here's how you tell. See how perfectly symmetrical opposite the leaflets are. That's an opposite leaf structure. That is diagnostic meta sequoia, dawn redwood. Uh, now reduced in range, it was just China, though it had been circumpolar all over the northern hemisphere. Look at that. Meta sequoia, we've got evidence here of it not only being able to seed, but being able to establish right here, away from the lawnmowers. Let's go see if we can find it. Let's see where the adult is. I found the dawn redwood. I'd forgotten it's deciduous. So uh, here, we'll take a look. You can see the bark is very different. Very, very different. quite smooth. It doesn't have those large fissures in it. And look at all the leaf material here. There's some oaks mixed in too. But basically, this is a, uh, and they don't just drop the little individual leaf leaflets there. They, they drop the entire branchlet. See that? And again, this is opposite, not alternate. So this is a dawn redwood. Meta sequoia. And here's, we'll get a look from its base here over to here. See that? Right, that big one in the background. 
that's where I saw the baby meta sequoia growing. That is really exciting evidence of their ability to naturalize in this landscape. The meta sequoia would be neat if I could see some baby sequoias too. I'll have to keep an eye out. Now that I've seen the giant ones, I need to start looking for the babies. Let's continue. Laurelhurst Park, Portland, Oregon. Right in the center there, that deciduous meta sequoia. Here's the sequoia with a beautiful fern. And right over there, right in the center, uh, that reddish bark, but very different bark from anything else. That's the Dawn Redwood I was at. So we're going to prowl around this area here, and we're going to look and see if we can see any more seedlings of Dawn Redwood, and especially if we can find some sequoia seedlings. I have never seen any sequoia seedlings. I mean, it's great that they're able to grow here, but they have to be able to reproduce. And I don't know, maybe they need a fire to open their cones. I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to look this up. I'll have to learn more about it. Here you can see, just pausing for a moment, the top of the Dawn Redwood, the Meta Sequoia. There's a sequoia there. There's that big one there. And the other one's here. And we are walking along, looking to see if we can see any more seedlings. Standing on the sidewalk, I think I've seen the first redwood here. See that, that leaf structure? I'm pulling back here. Um, obviously not a dawn redwood, because this one's in full leaf. Michael's walking down to it. It's by a sequoia here. This is the first redwood that we've seen. Yeah, all, what, what we're doing right now, there's just so many sequoias everywhere around here. <laughs> Look at them all. Um, I'm just really trying to find seedlings, and then I was looking for a redwood, so I think we found it. Let's go close. Yeah, from here you can see the reddish bark, and I just looked very closely there uh, on the leaflets. They're alternate, not opposite, and obviously they're not deciduous. And look at what's uh, hanging from them. Little pollen, uh, pollen buds, uh, the male buds that we'll be putting out pollen. But there, you can see it's alternate. It's not as symmetrical looking as the branchlets of a dawn redwood. So this is the coast redwood. Okay, this is the same redwood, and I'm stopping here just for an instance. Um, redwoods famously have what's called lignotubers that come out of the kind of below ground base area so that if anything happens to the main stem, ready to go. You've got these other ones here. Uh, so out of this, the same roots, can even the ones that have been uh, clear cut, can be coming up again. And technically, uh, the genetic individual, the roots coming back from the roots, uh, can be thousands of years old, even when it's only this small. And again, you see the alternate leaf structure signaling a coast redwood from California basil sprouts. It's about nine months after I was filming in Laurelhurst Park in Portland, and I'm here in Humboldt County, Northern California, alongside two what had been basil sprouts that sprung up and became the trees being supported by the same old roots after this big one here was logged. Now, the thing to know about basil sprouts is it's only on redwoods. I've learned it's not on the Sierra giant sequoias. It's just on the California coast redwoods. And this is probably the reason why being here in this regrowth logged forest, uh, it's still quite beautiful because the basil sprouts are there ready to go. So I'm going to show a couple other video segments of basil sprouts that I've seen here in Northern California, and then we'll get back to the Laurel Hurst video. Basil sprouts.
This is quite an old base and what had been logged right in the center there. But what's remarkable, look at the number of basal sprouts that are still growing. It, it didn't just knock it down to one or two or three. It's, it's the whole set. And here, looking down up close, we can see We can see some of the original basal structure right in there. Okay, walking along the edge of the pond, I found another, this is a two-stemmed coast redwood, very healthy. And the reason I stopped here, I'm going to try to show it as I go in here. Here you can see the small cones hanging off the tips of the branchlets. Coast redwood. All right, those are the two redwoods I was just down by. And looking up here, look at, we've got three. Let's look up at the canopies first. One, two, three. Dawn Redwoods, Meta Sequoias. Look at the interesting bases that they have. Very similar to the bald cypress, Taxodium, close relative that we have in the eastern USA. Um, but what I'm excited about here is look at all these cones. And the cones are so distinct from the redwoods, about, about the size of the redwood, not nearly as big as the um, giant sequoia, but it's a, a real different look to it. I'll, I'll patch in a close-up photo of the distinctions between meta sequoia, dawn redwood, sequoia genus, which is actually the coast redwood, and sequoia dendron, which is the giant sequoia. It's a little confusing, the common names versus the genus names. What to notice here is that uh, the, the giant sequoia cones are really huge. All three have very similar structures to them, but just like as the, with the leaf structure, I'm going to zero in here, the meta sequoia on the right, do you see how the scale, they kind of look like lips almost, are directly under one another in a line. They're symmetrical, just like the little leaflets of Dawn Redwood are opposite each other, very symmetrical. Whereas on the, on the left, the redwood cones, um, their little scale structures, the, the lips that you see there, they're alternate. You see they're kind of offset from one another. When you look down the length of the cone, there's no symmetrical line of them. We finished viewing the two California native redwood types and their cousin from China, the Dawn Redwood, all in Portland's Laurelhurst Park. Now we head north to Seattle. We'll start in Washington Park Arboretum. There we'll find all three redwood cousins at the north end of the Pine Needham section of the Arboretum. Then we'll finish off on campus of the University of Washington. Now, Washington Park Arboretum. Here we have a set of gorgeous sequoias. These are the sequoias, not the redwoods. One, two, three, four, five. And these are definitely Definitely sequoias. Oh, look at this. We have right here. Here's branchlet hanging down. The sequoias. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, this is great. 
Wow. These are giants. Look really healthy here. And obviously, this is not a place where anything ever gets watered. So we can be secure that these have not, I don't know, maybe they hand watered them or something when they were first planted, but they sure wouldn't need it. All right. Giant Sequoia here in Seattle, Washington. So we've just come from those red trunks. There's one right in the center there. That's a Sequoia Grove. And as we walk along the trail here, nice path, look what we have. A meta sequoia, a dawn redwood. And of course, this is deciduous. All right, on the west side of the Pine Needham, uh, these branchlets certainly look to me, and the cones beneath look to me like a redwood. Younger here. See how red the bark is? That's another one back there. And here's a much smaller one here. Here we can get a good look at the branchlet type. alternate leaves. These are the redwoods. You can see the branchlets here. Very characteristic of the redwoods. And uh, separated enough so they get full sun. So they've got vegetative growth down here. So this is just a lovely little, I think everything in here is a, is a redwood. Okay, standing right here, every large tree we see around here, it's very dark in here, is a redwood. We got 360, 360 redwoods here. Very interesting to see the different structure that you just don't get that huge base that the giant sequoias do. The redwoods, of course, get taller. They need fog or more water. Um, uh, but they seem to grow more like a Douglas fir, pretty much straight up without making that huge support of a base here. But look how far they stretch their branches out into the sun there. The redwood grove. And here's probably the biggest redwood right at the south end of this big grove. Sidewalk right there. And just looking up. We've just completed Washington Park Arboretum. Let's head up to the UW campus. There, we'll begin at the Burke Museum at the far north end. And then we'll walk south, finishing off in view of Husky Stadium. I'm at the Burke Museum of the University of Washington. This is January 10th, 2017. Uh, walking onto campus to take a look at some of the trees and this one wasn't even labeled on the campus tree tour map, but I could tell by the leaves who this was. I was walking the sidewalk and I saw uh, one of the down leaflets here. This is a redwood. Very, very different leaf structure from the sequoia dendron, giant sequoia. Here's some examples of leaves that are falling along here and the sidewalk. Now I see a little one off the edge here. I don't know if that's coming from the roots or uh, whether that was a seed. I'll go take a look. I just looked at the base of this, and they keep cutting this back. This would be coming up uh, probably from the lignotuber around here, and they keep cutting it back so it doesn't become another stem. Here's another view of the redwood from the entrance to the Burke Museum. can't find this one on the tree tour map. It's spectacular, 
it sure looks like a uh, Coast Redwood to me. Go in here on the fallen leaves and cones. Some other spectacular conifers along there. And by golly, if those didn't look like sequoias when I visited them. Susula Library is just over there somewhere. Here's another view of it. Meta Sequoia, Dawn Redwood on the University of Washington campus. And this is January 10th, 2017. This is a deciduous tree, so you can see it has lost its leaves up there. Here's a little redwood grove at the south end of campus. Here, the center is the biggest one there. But look at all these little ones coming up from what would be the lignotuber. This is pretty standard feature for redwood. Now as I go around over here, that sure looks like a giant sequoia. Beautiful. Okay, this is at the south end of campus, and this is assuredly a sequoia dendron, a giant sequoia. It's labeled specimen number 42 on the online map of the identified trees here. Let's see if I get an example of a cone here. There's a cone. Oh, this is relatively new. What I see on the other cones in this area is I have a sense that they really don't open unless it gets very warm. These aren't opened yet. The seeds can't come out. And for some reason, the rodents have to, haven't gone in after them. So there's a whole series of giant sequoia, sequoia dendron, right there in the center, that have been planted at this south edge of campus here. There's a big one. And then over, continuing the sidewalk, you can see some younger ones. That's the end of the field documentation for this episode on urban parks and arboretums that have already planted California's redwoods and giant sequoias. What are the lessons? And in particular, what's the distinctions between the urban street trees of the previous episode where we took a look in coastal Pacific Northwest of where sequoias and coast redwoods have already been planted. What's the distinction about urban parks and arboretums? Well, I see several advantages for planting the trees in parks and arboretums, and particularly studying them there. First of all, uh, they tend not to be planted anywhere where they're near pavement or sidewalks, uh, where the redwoods in particular would be uplifting the sidewalks. Um, nor by any utility lines, nor anywhere where branches falling off might fall on roofs. So while we can learn about trees, street trees, and trees in urban neighborhoods, people's backyards, they're often at a big disadvantage if they've got pavement anywhere near them, if they might have had their roots being crushed, if they're just not able to pick up too much groundwater from the rains. So for a variety of reasons, parks and arboretums are really the places to go to see if redwoods and sequoias can survive, and especially if they can naturalize well northward of their current native ranges. And what I mean by naturalize, of course, is not only can they produce viable seeds, but can those seeds, if there's a nearby sufficient open area for the sequoias to germinate and shaded areas for the redwoods to germinate that aren't being mowed and so forth as to whether they're able to naturalize there. And that's something that you wouldn't be able to tell necessarily from street trees. 
The other thing is that uh, you don't have to really worry about the future of these trees if you want to start a long study. In arboretums and parks, they're not likely to be topping the trees or tearing up the pavement and therefore the roots to put in some sort of a utility line or sewer line. As well, anybody can walk up to the trees and study them closely in a park or arboretum. Finally, in the parks and arboretums I've come across, whenever there's one coast redwood or one giant sequoia, there's going to be more and there will be an opportunity for them to cross-pollinate. And certainly that's the best way for having a sense of whether there's viable seeds being produced. The next episode in this series, episode 9E, will entail visits I've made to the Pacific Northwest interior locations, that is east of the Cascades, in both northern Oregon and far enough into Washington that it's very eastern Washington and even westernmost Idaho. And the important thing there is that yes there are trees growing especially the giant sequoias not so much the redwoods. So the cold isn't a problem but we're going to be looking at to what degree do the trees need us to water them at the beginning uh, and even water them once they've matured. That'll be the big question there. Because again, climate change, assisted migration, what needs to happen is for us humans right now to start moving wild seed populations and seedlings quite far north, but only to the places where they're not going to need our help ongoingly in order to be able to stay alive. And so thus far, it seems like it's probably west of the Cascades. It's got to be wet enough for both species. After that, we're going to consider what the fossil evidence indicates. And that is, where have coast redwoods and giant sequoias been located before under different climate regimes? So we'll go to the fossils to learn that story. As always, may the forest be with you.